Ender Lilies is a Metroidvania that is much in line with what we'd expect in terms of quality from a game like Ori and the Blind Forest uh, and Hollow Knight. Uh, it is it has a lot of action, uh, a lot of drama. There's a lot of sad music. Uh, it is very it, to me to me. Uh, it's it's very anime. Uh, <laughs> you can tell by the music, uh, and of course the lolly, the main character that you take, the Ender Lily lolly. Um, it does definitely have a lot of anime flair to it. Uh, it was a little off-putting to me initially because I'm not not necessarily drawn to anime-related things, especially action games that have just kind of a sad and like kind of uh, just very dreary and melancholy soundtrack. Um, because I don't like having feels. But <laughs> uh, I gave it a shot and. And, um, well, thanks to Hohan uh, for gifting it, but I decided to go ahead and hop in and give it a shot, and I am really glad I did because it is quite good. Uh, now, it is an early access. There's about four hours worth of content, um, maybe a little bit more. I haven't quite done everything that you can do, but I have completed all the bosses. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, four hours of content, 1999, uh, 1.0, obviously is going to have a whole lot more. I am on the early access list for 1.0. That's right. You heard, you heard that right. I'm on the early access list. For 1.0, not early access, early access. I'm on the early list for that. So uh, when I, when that comes out, I will absolutely be streaming it. Uh, I did stream the entirety of this particular playthrough, uh, and I am going to. Uh, um, and I'm looking forward for the uh, to, to the 1.0 whenever that ends up get being released. So. Uh, I, you can see right here, three hours and 45 minutes. That's what it took to go and beat all the bosses. The bosses do have, uh, there was a lot of challenge there. Uh, the game does not have a difficulty slider or anything like that. It, it has one single fixed difficulty and you will find at times that the game is, you know, can be pretty difficult. Um, it gives you some basic, basic moves when you first start off. I'm going to start off with this one here. It's 10 minutes in. This gets me past the press A to jump, uh, press... <laughs> Press X to attack, right? We're past that point now. We're gonna get into some more of the more of the of the beefy parts of the game here, so you guys can get a good gist, get a gist of what uh, what to expect. So, uh, so we're starting off here. This is a bench, uh, obviously. Uh, this is your respite, and it comes in different forms. There's like beds. There's uh, there's like little cafes, little rundown broken cafes. There's benches and shit. Uh, and these are all basically just places where you could go and you can uh, just rest. And here you could go and you could spend uh, you know a certain kind of currency that you'll collect uh, to upgrade uh, abilities and such. Uh, you can swap out relics, uh, which basically give you like just some general. Uh, uh, up upgrades and stuff. So like, you know, more HP or something like that. Um, your enhance here and your spirit. Your spirits is basically, you see this little guy, this guy, little guy. You see this guy standing to my left right here? Uh, so he is essentially my first spirit. He is my primary attack spirit. The spirits that you collect, are they all have different abilities. So it actually ends up looking pretty cool uh, visually because you can see I have this little spirit that's following me here, but every time I hit the X button, he comes out and he does an attack. Look at that. So imagine having like three spirits uh, at a time because you can switch. You can see in the bottom left corner, you can see you can switch. So you have two different sets. So you have three spirits at a time that will accompany you and you can activate them all like in succession and just going to do different moves. And you have all these spirits putting, popping out of the woodwork and just ch 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 doing all these moves. It actually looks very, very cool. Uh, and eat the spirits that I've collected so far, and I think I've collected like seven of them or so. Um, they have all been uh, very unique and, you know, like, even though there were some, I was like, eh, I'll probably never do that. I'll probably never use that. I end up using it. <laughs> like, I end up finding a use for it because they're all, they're situational and the game gives you enough uh, in terms of, uh, you know, different biomes and different, um, uh, different environments that you're going to be attacking. Oh, there's a hand right there. I didn't notice that. Um where you will find a use for these things you know like there's an underwater biome and so there's certain attacks that will probably work a little bit better underwater uh there are here we're in you know kind of a rundown old busted castle um there's not a whole lot of use for like let's say um a flying ranged uh, uh spirit but once you get outside then yes there is so there's there's this very situational set and so what i what i have actually on my on my main uh uh character account is a excuse me um is like a, a melee set short range set and then i have a whoop uh, and then i have a, a range set that i just swap to whenever i need um and it works out really well it, it makes gameplay feel very dynamic because there's no cooldown on swapping or anything you just basically swap and then you're good now you're not going to see too much of the swapping and all that stuff as we play through today because they are um well, because we're not gonna really collect that many spirits before we get through. Oh, uh, so you notice that there's a dodge. 
The dodge has iframes uh, for the duration of the actual dive itself. Zoom, boom. Uh, I don't know if it's for this, like, if I'm this high up, if it gets it between all the way down, but I know that you could jump through enemies, and I never have a problem with that in terms of uh, uh, having her connect with an enemy while I'm diving like that. Um, oh, boop, boop, boop. Does she have iframes through the attack? I think she, yeah, I believe, I believe so. Like, even if you're in the arc of an attack, I believe she still maintains her, uh, her iframe status. Uh, so these little things that you find basically gives you more insight into the story. I don't want to necessarily go through and read them all for you guys, purely because it's the story. So I don't want to, like, tell you guys a story. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, I'll give you guys the gen the gist. So she, this is the, your priestess. She basically walks, she wakes up at the beginning, and then that's where she meets this, um this spirit here uh and the spirit says do you remember anything and she says no typical protagonist starting story right it's like oh i have amnesia uh and so she's like well why don't you come outside take a look and you'll figure things out for yourself like, okay cool and so as you play and as you'll see here in a second uh, as you play you'll start to uncover more uh of of kind of like what's happening with uh, her and she'll have memories that kind of recur and all this stuff so it's a little the story can be a little cliche but uh the way it kind of the way it wraps itself into the environment and what's happening here like i am i am definitely invested in like what happened here uh and why is it that the people were fighting um well you'll see here in a second uh let's go ahead and do this here there is thick with rot of the blight take heed to protect her, I must destroy. So, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Let's take care of her first. So, uh, the game does have a soundtrack. You would probably just like, whoa, because uh, we would play that whole part of this whole first part of this Indie for Breakfast here. You didn't hear any music. Uh, but it is, um, uh, I feel like there are some elements where the music is missing purely because early access. Uh, but it's probably gonna be music like this. Most of the time the ambiance, I'm just gonna avoid it for while I talk. Uh, whoa! Uh, but most of the time the ambiance is, um, is pretty, uh, 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 uh just, just like, just regular ambiance, not necessarily music. Now the music is... Whoa, 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 pretty, uh, uh, pretty melancholy and somber and such. There are some more intense themes that will, uh, will come across as we play. Let's go ahead and get her down here. Now, she is ob obviously the, the tutorial boss, so, you know, you're not really gonna get a whole lot of, uh, of, uh, difficulty out of her. No, not much of a challenge. But let me tell you, though. Like, even though it's some melancholy drama music, like, it's good. Like, this like this portion of this song right here is great. There's other parts of the other parts of the soundtrack, whoa, um, that I also enjoy. Very catchy. Oh. Get close, get a good couple of hits in here, whoa. A little bit of damage there. Damn. So here is her true form. Now the real fight begins. Ugh. Now she has a handful of attacks here. I got too close there. I touched her. Oh. I think she's gonna charge in. Good. Now I already know all the attacks for for her, so obviously it makes this fight a little bit easier. Um, one of the biggest challenges of the fights that I've had, oh, that I've had so far, uh, is that you are learning the fight as you go. Whoa, trying to learn. Oh, crap. That's, that was painful. Heal that up. You have three heals. You see the upper left corner, there's a couple of spirit orbs there. Ooh, baby. I was supposed to protect you. So then you touch her to purify her. And then we get a memory flashback. I adored the priestess of the fount. She was our only hope against the immortal blighted. With unflinching resolve and a smile on her face, she epitomized radiant tenderness. My sister's letter informed me that the priestess was in poor health. It seemed the burden of her purification rituals was taking its toll. I couldn't rejoice at the, po the peace she brought uh, at the cost of her own well-being. Moreover, I couldn't forgive myself for not being able to protect her as a guardian. No, it was my own sister who was chosen for that role. In my darkest hour, I found solace in Lily, who was much like the priestess herself. 
Even if I couldn't serve her as a guardian, at the least I could do was protect her. But then the rain began to fall. Cries of pain rang out in the distance. The head guardian called it the rain of death. I gave Lily sanctuary and took my weapon in hand. The rain never let up. So now I have a new spirit. A new spirit is basically a new ability. It says the guardian Sigrid says uh, swings an iron ball to attack surrounding enemies. Sub skills have a cooldown and limited number of uses, but can be used in conjunction with other skills. It says the blighted wing of guardian Sigrid grants an extra jump while in midair. So I got a couple things out of that there. Got a double jump. Woo -woo. So now this guy leans in. He says the soul has been purified, no longer imprisoned by blight. Within that memory just now, the woman called you Lily. Surely that is your name. If you retrace the memories of the blighted in life, you may just remember something yourself. It may prove difficult, but can you carry on? So, now we have a double jump, and once we get ourselves to a uh, table, or a respite, we will also have uh, the spirit ability that we just uh, we just accumulated here, just picked up. I was going to go over here though, because some of you guys may have already seen this, but there is a little hop we could do to get this. It's just another prayer bead. That'll give me, oh sorry, it is a prayer bead. This is a relic, it's our first relic actually. It'll boost our HP and you'll see where we put it on right over here once we get here. Now you can't put it on while you're going. You have to actually be at a respite in order to uh, change skills, do all that stuff, which makes sense. There we go, your game is saved. And now it says, yep, zip. thank you, I don't know how this works. Uh, I'm the one doing the show here. So relics, first we're going to put this on. Now we only have uh, two slots. Some relics use more than one slot. Uh, you can unlock more slots as you progress in the game. This one, as it says, this slightly increases the maximum the, the uh, maximum HP. Here is your uh, where you can adjust your spirits. Uh, now I only have two, but uh, just so you could get an idea of how this works, we could go ahead and take uh, this, put this here, and then put this here, like just randomly there. Uh, and then when we back out, what you'll see is when I swap, there you go. I don't know if you needed a demonstration of that, but there you go. <laughs> now, uh, her, the attack that you get with her, there's two of them. Uh, there's this one here, which you saw when we fought her, right? And then there's a jumping attack that she does. Uh, there's a little bit of cooldown, uh, and then jumping attack here. There you go. Uh, both of them are very, very handy, especially early on here. So we're gonna we're gonna stay here just to refill those charges because there's only a handful that you get. Thirteen, I think. Yeah, thirteen. So we want to sit there and recharge those, uh, and anytime you get a respite, you want to jump onto it just to recharge both your uh, your spirit uses and your, um, uh, your your prayer your prayer beads or your prayers. That way you get more heals. Now you're you you will you will progress fast enough. Oh, there was a bench right here too. Um, hold on, we got more story here. I think. It says, are you all right? Don't push yourself, take a rest. There we go. And we'll go back now. All right. So there are some uh, voice elements here. It is in Korean. Um, and you will get... Uh, oh, what is this here? Like a, a good amount of story once you get to some of the cutscenes and everything. There's also an opening cutscene that we skipped as well. He says, chaos has taken the villages long before even my arrival. But did the rain end them or the blighted? Hmm. My bond with the priestess is a perennial one. I may not be able to lead the charge in this form, but my blade is yours. Don't look surprised. You think me some sort of wretch to leave a child out in this horrid rain? Let us trudge on. Come on, let's go. There we go. 
This is your, um, well, let's see what he says. Do you recognize them? Seems they lost consciousness before succumbing to the madness. So this ends up being your fast travel horse. And so, does it be a threat? Best keep your distance. So once we uh, collect this here, I think, right? Uh, girl's letter. Da, 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 da. Yep, okay, no. Uh, but eventually that does become your, like very, very soon, that becomes your fast travel horse. So you can move between locations, which is a staple of most Metroidvanias, is being able to uh, uh, fast travel between locations. I'm gonna slice some dudes up. We have a couple of, uh, I think we have like a mini boss fight or something coming up here very soon. You might have another boss, I'm not sure. Like I said, there's like seven bosses, I think. Maybe, maybe more. Um, just judging by how many spirits that I have. Oh, just fuck. Give me a break. But notice here, though, that there is music in the background playing consistently. So I do think that's an early access thing where some elements, some parts of the game uh, are just flat out missing any kind of ambiance. Like there's not even like crickets uh, in like some of the forest scenes. So I think it's just purely a, you know, early access is missing content thing. And you'll know when you get to the end of the early access uh, portion because it will tell you. Oh, this is the song I really like, actually. Really, really like this one. Uh, red and white flowers. I'll explain that. Thank you very much. Uh, so, red and white flowers. <laughs> white flowers. So, I just use a heal, right? And I'm going to bust this thing up here. And now I get that heal back. It just gives you one. That's all. There's a there's a red one here. And the red one will, if I go ahead and use this there. And then hit this. It's going to refill that one charge. It gives. I think it gives you way more than one. I think it just refills them entirely. But I'm not sure. I haven't tried to empty one out. And honestly, I haven't really emptied out uh, too many of them. Um, they give you plenty of charges to last in between either before you die or, uh, or you either you'll die first or you will, um, uh, or you'll find a place to reload them. Those arrow guys are my, are just the bane of my existence, man, I swear. Oh, a little too close. Okay, good. I don't know what it is. Like some of the, some of the projectile based characters are just, they just, they just, I don't know, man. I just get my ass kicked from them so many times. It's embarrassing on stream, just getting my ass kicked. Hit that. No! Gotta consider whatever I have, I don't remember what the next boss is. And every time I get one of these, you might as well just go ahead and just top off and then just get it. Jump, 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 good. Now you can, as I just did, you can combo your own uh, attacks with with whatever spirit you have out. So um, there are some spirits that actually lock you where you don't have the ability to do that. Uh, but 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 for the most part, they're there to augment your own attacks, not necessarily take the place of them. Uh, her giant flail is uh, perfect for keeping mobs in check. They're getting knocked back. They get knocked around and such. Ah, here we go, mini boss. He's gonna jump over here, I think. There we go. So does it save me the pain? It's unbearable. Purify this guy too. This is a pretty small encounter here. Most of the encounters where you get a spirit are usually pretty big. <laughs> like they're they're like that first si uh, first fight that we got uh, ourselves into. So this this in this ability that we have we can't use it yet is just basically lobs a uh, the same way that this guy kind of jumps like it basically the lobs and explodes so it does some amount of range AOE. It's very handy actually. Um, you end up there's a couple of abilities you get later on that will. Uh, Kind of overlap and you end up maybe replacing them um but for the most part like it's very very handy and then you can upgrade it too and it gets really good uh there is water in the game you can swim on top and eventually you'll be able to swim underneath there are things that you want to you know maybe get down there and get if i could jump down here i could show you oh no it cannot i believe down there there is a uh an exit or something well because i can get low enough to, to actually see it oh hold something approaches there he is Or rather, it follows. I sense no clear mind. It seems to be drawn by your amulet. 
Perhaps they were once in service to a white priestess. Is there a desire to assist us? You priestess are a rare breed. So now we go over here and we will put our new skill on the board. Fast travel available. Yes, it is. Perfect again for any, any Metroidvania. You're going to need a way to get around. Um, and, you know, there is a formula to making a good Metroidvania. And this game definitely hits a lot of them like dead on. Um, we're not gonna read these things. <laughs> you can read them when you get in. It does create, it does draw a pretty vivid story to what happened, uh, to these people and what the blight is and all that. Oh, here we go. The crow. Th ah, the crow. Now my lob ability is useless against, um, flying ability, flying mobs. Oh, 74 damage. Pretty good. And then again, you could like buff that as you uh, as you get more blighted souls and such that you can go and put into bottom left corner there. Stagnant blight, furious blight, yeah. You'll collect that stuff. We'll probably come across a couple here in the next few minutes. Um, and that, but I don't know if I'll get enough to necessarily put into any of these abilities. We'll see. I hate these. I hate these flying crows. Those ones are easy. But they'll get, boy, they'll, they'll get a good angle on you, and they're just just out of reach. And they're just annoying. We'll leave that there. Now, the map, upper right corner, uh, blue means incomplete, yellow means complete. So, if you pass through a, an area and it says it's, and it's blue, then obviously that means that there's things that you need to do, which is kind of handy. Um, just gives you an idea of, like, what you need to, maybe you need to go back and find something or whatever. Ah, there we go, we got a, a soul from, or a blight from there. Oh. Yep. Break some of these and get a couple more. I think there's one right there. Nope. There we go. See, use all your skills and like together and just look it's just harmonious. It's so good. There is something up there. You see that red? That is the stagnant blight. You could pick it up. Uh now obviously I can't reach it. I don't think I can even reach it now in my current status at the end of early access. Uh, I believe there's probably a triple jump or maybe a glide ability that's going to be coming. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I do not believe I can reach it at all. But I it could be wrong. Maybe we'll discover right here. Nope. Maybe I can jump from this all the way over. It's a pretty long jump. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, do, I do think there's like a, a glide or something coming eventually. Just a beautiful game, though. It definitely, uh, whoa, really, really honed in on this aesthetic. It's very dreary, me dreary, melancholy, sleepy hollow, uh, kind of aesthetic. Uh, and then the priestess just looks so good. Um, the way she kind of just stands out from everything, and then your spirits are all, oh gosh, are just, uh, you know, they look dead <laughs> along with everything else, as they're as they should be. Their spirits. Oh gosh, I try to dive, jump out of there. Dogs, they're fast, very fast. There we go. Let's go and charge up. Get this guy out of here. So there's a down. What is down here? I forget. Ding. Ah, here we go. Let's see, the girl who became a guardian lies underground. Stagnant Blight times 10 can be used to enhance skills. We'll leave that there. We don't necessarily need that yet. Ah, that's right. We cannot open this. Yep. We need to hit the switch from the other side. Do something down there, maybe. Let's see if we can make our way all the way up and around. I believe we have probably one more boss I could show you guys. And I hope I could beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to rush through some of these things. See you like Takes a lot of damage there. Jeez, man. Another stagnant blight up there. Can't reach it. Uh, give me something out of these things. Ooh, just out of range. Yes, we need that. Can't remember 
what's over here. Look ahead. Hmm. You don't see anything? I believe there's something over there, but we're not gonna dig right now. We're on a mission. Jump, 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 double jump. Ah. Yep. Leave her there for a second and do some work. Yeah, too easy. Then dodge some of these guys again. Just gonna make our way down here if we can. There's an enemy here we have to take care of. I feel like I'm on top of my on top of my dodge game right now. Doing good. I'm rolling out here. I spy a shackle over yonder. Here we go. Shack. So we'll go put it here we go. Now I can show you guys. Oh, it's the note. Yeah, sure, but there's also a rest. Now I can show you guys how to spend these uh spirit upgrades, right? Let me see. Oh wait, no, no. I, I don't think I have enough to enhance, actually. Let's see, uh yeah, I need 10. So here we go. So I can upgrade this, um, this skill, this spirit, or one of these two spirits, whichever one. Um, and so this one's is cooldown 4.5 and aquatic, which means it works underwater. Uh, and this one is, uh, cooldown, uh, is 2.7. Um, now this is a, if I upgrade this, the cooldown time goes down and the attack goes up. This one, the attack goes up. Uh, and then of course this one, if I had an ancient soul, which again, I have not come across one in the early access, there might be one out there somewhere. Um, then you can upgrade your main attack. Now, eventually your main attack is going to start to falter a little bit. You will do more damage as you level up, but, you, but it will start to feel like a fun kind of falls behind a little bit. And I think this is, that's just the game, uh, uh, curve just basically forcing you to start using more of your abilities. It'd be boring if you were just going through and just basically umbral knighting everything, right? Um, Guardian Secret and then uh, a Cliffside Hamlet Youth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually upgrade mm, this because it is such a good lob uh, to do more attack and less cooldown. So yes, and then there you go. And we can't really afford anything else, so we'll go ahead and move on. Let's save. We don't need to save. We'll go. We don't need to save as a throwaway. Oh, there's an exit there. I don't remember where the boss is, though. Actually, I maybe I do. No, no, that's a dead end. That's a dead end. Well, it's a, not a, quite a dead end. There's, but there's stuff back there that you'd want to go and collect. Uh, as with most you know, Metroidvanias, right? Like you, you, you're you're meant to explore and uh, and find, you know, upgrades, augments, relics, whatever, wh what have you. Right now, we're just trying to make our way through. See that floor right there on the right? There's an ability that you could get later on that will allow you to smash through it. But I'm sure you guys already put that together. That is a different type of ogre. Whoa, that one uh, sp spouts bile. He will also, I believe, um, yeah, he also does that too. Drop that on him. I want his XP, so it's a good amount. This guy. Get out of there. No! <laughs> Alright, let's try not to mess this all up. Oh, dang it. <laughs> of course, drop this. That drops the, uh, the, the gate at the bottom. Which up over this way. You see how there's a ledge up at the top? See, there's all kinds of hidden stuff here. Ah, this. Probably five, five health. Yep, five health. Oh, I'm standing around on top of them. We're good. Like I said, the hitboxes are really, really small. You, you can, you'll find that you can actually walk through some enemies. Oh, fuck, of course I say that. Uh, you can walk through some enemies. Not all of them. Um, with no problem whatsoever. Here you go, gates open. Lots of enemies. That's right, it's a bit of a madhouse through here. Do our best to... Oh. Oh man! Oh, just, just as I was about to heal. So yes, that is a focus. Uh, so if you break that focus at any point, it will pull you out of that heal. Joy. <laughs> 
So we're gonna have to run back. The enemies will respawn. Uh, but it's okay. We weren't very far. It was just the next room over. Well, it is, well, two rooms over. But you get to keep everything. You don't lose any, uh, you don't lose any XP or anything like that. See, the doors are still open. Just the enemies respawn. So here we go. Man, this time. I tried to duck that, but it didn't work out, I guess. Jeez. Jump that up there. Oh, boy. Hit this. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the crow. So the crow's ability is kind of home a little bit, but they're also kind of warbly. Like they they move, and you'll see as they as they as they shoot across, they will um whoa. They will kind of uh, just like wobble back and forth, which makes them very unpredictable. Because at the same time as they're wobbling back and forth, they also home in on you. Let me see if I can show you guys. So there you go, crow attack, boom. See, kind of turns towards you. Kind of moving up and down, and then they kind of focus. Oh, no. Son of a bitch. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's not mess this up, guys. <sighs> Get this guy. Whoa, it's close. Oh, gosh, this ain't coming. Well, like I said, there's no difficulty slider. The, the, game, the game is what the game is. So, uh, if... You know, and it does get progressively more difficult. I, I definitely put a number of attempts into the uh, the last boss of early access, like a lot of attempts. Um, but it, but I mean, it felt good because it wasn't it wasn't like some bullshit fight. It was a real fight, real mechanics, and I just had to learn. I had to get good. Um, so it was challenging, and I really appreciated that. Oh, oh my gosh! It's a goddamn bull, you're over there. Can't get close. Let's get one more shot here. It's, it's amazing. You get close. It's like one, two, and he's done. Whoa, jeez. Okay, hit the switch. No. <laughs> Just dive all the way down to the ground. No fall damage, by the way. <laughs> that wasn't apparent. Now nah, look down there. See? More blight. Uh, no. Okay, good. Ah. Uh, yeah, actually, we could use that. What's up there? Some blight. We'll take that. Refills everything. Oh, I can't make that jump, actually. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm just going. We run. You, you run across, you know, whatever spirits or bosses or whatever as you... As you just kind of make your way across the map. Oh, dang! That's how you use the spirits, boy! <gasps> oh, okay. So, I, I think... Did I say this earlier? Uh, one of the complaints I have is... Oh, jeez. Is I feel like the game... Um, is not very forgiving with your jumps sometimes. Because... Uh, let's get let's past this guy real quick. Oh, dang it. There's a lot going on right now. Ding. Hold on, I'm getting chased by that. One minute. So, you, you might have to rewind it to see this, but look when I jump on the ledges. There is a, there's a gap between where she grabs it and where her, right where her hands are and where the board is sometimes. So there's like basically a little bit of a gap. And you'll see there's a lot of ledges, which kind of makes it feel a little wonky, right? And there are times when you'll move forward and it looks like you just kind of give up and, and just like kind of just drop straight down. And that's because you didn't make the jump, but you feel like you're supposed to make the jump. Uh, so some of the ledge grab is, grabs uh, definitely uh, feel weird. It doesn't happen often enough where I'm just like, the mechanics suck. Uh, but sometimes it happens and I'm like, great, I thought I could make that jump. And then you're just like, well, I guess not. Let's get this guy out of here. Let me get this. Oh, Chain of Sorcery grants additional relic slot. There we go, see? And then again, you'll have relics that take one or two extra, or two slots. Nope, see ya. Ooh, got close. There's something down there, too. Mm-hmm. Rest here. Then we'll dip. Oh, actually, I can enhance. It's usually he's highlighted. 
Um, let's see. So the price went up. Now it's 30 for the next uh, upgrade for this. You, they just don't want you to spend 10 each time. So you have to collect more and more. So I'm going to upgrade that. That way we have a nice, well-rounded skill set. Now, uh, I believe you can encounter some of the bosses in different orders, but I think I know the next one's going to be, yeah, this guy. Uh-huh, Roar, and now he's going to start doing his thing. Yeah. Now, this is pretty challenging, so... And I've only done this fight once. So I don't really know how I'm going to I'm gonna do here. We'll give it a couple try, tries, but, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's not very... Oh, jeez. Do some work. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Terrible at diving. Just getting a little too close because he's turning around, he's walking towards it. Oh, here we go. That's my chance. Yeah, just get a little too close to him. Now he's gonna... Oh gosh, what was his ability again? He's gonna do something... Right, big charge, that's right. Oh! Oh no! Oh gosh! Ah, I was trying to type through him. We'll give him one more shot here. We'll give him one more shot. Ah, oh, God. That was just bad. That was bad on my part. Dude. Oh my god. We'll go ahead and charge up now. Just waste that right away. Ah, oh, damn. Ah, oh, didn't quite get the jump. I try to drop that spear and um big charge there we go uh and dive through him at the same time and you can't do that <laughs> oh damn that was a big... okay this is it whoa no oh a huge arcing swing yeah, so he knows that his abilities have kind of, um, now his, his swing that was really easy to avoid before by diving behind him, now he has an extra one that will go, uh, uh, behind him as well. Now, and also his little charge there, or his slam, also does more. Okay, this is, it's gonna get more difficult here. Whoa! Like that, see that? Yeah, that's rough. That should have hit me, but you know what? <laughs> but you know I'm good. Oh, damn. Oh, jeez. It's a big slam here. Huge splash damage on that, by the way, which is, oh, which is amazing. Big arc. Knock me back. No damage though. Now the music started to pick up, and now here we go. Now, now the real fight begins. <laughs> He's gonna jump over here, right? Yeah, that was a waste. Oh. Hey, but you know what? You don't need to see the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, early access! What? <laughs> How funny. This is the first time it's actually crashed on me. So, hey, you know what? That's it. Good. Perfect. Perfect! 
<laughs> well, guys, uh, that's Ender Lilies. I hate to end it on that note, but that's uh, that's the note that I wanted to leave us on. Uh, Ender Lilies is currently available right now on Steam for early access. Uh, in early access for $19.99. You could check it out. My name is Mike B. Uh, it is a solid Metroidvania. It really is a solid Metroidvania. Uh, now, you know, I don't mind if you you know if you want to go ahead and wait. Just put it on your put it on your wish list and just wait until the game goes 1.0 because I will be streaming it uh, before it goes live. Before it goes uh, 1.0. Point oh, so um, uh, so yeah, you know, you could kind of get a good insight into what what you can uh, uh, expect. I do have a couple of vibes that you want to go and dig through my uh, to my recent stream history uh, and find um, where I did play this game, and um, it was uh, again, it was pretty solid, pretty solid. The boss fights were punishing. Uh, I mean, like you saw right there, like it, you, you kind of, uh, once you feel like you get the gist, then there's always like a second phase or a third phase or something like that that comes out and you're just like, what in the F? Um, and some of the fights you feel like, you feel like you're like, oh, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> like flat out. Like I think at one time we were looking at chat and I was like, dude, I wake, are we, even chat was just like, are, are we, is this, are we doing something wrong? <laughs> like it felt like we were doing shit. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's overall though super solid game, a lot a lot of fun. Uh, you know, a little melancholy, a little dreary and such. Um, but uh, but you know they, they've nailed it, they've nailed the vibe, they've nailed the the aesthetic, and um, you know it's uh, it's pretty good. So that's it. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.